How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of a brand new show. Uh, so I haven't actually told Tim this yet. This is actually a brand new show we're doing right now. This isn't going to be a traditional podcast that we have. Well, we haven't done in the past three weeks or four weeks, <laughs> uh, but we're actually debuting a new show today. We're kind of thinking of different names and stuff we're going to do. And uh, Josh at JC Lego Man on Twitter came up with a pretty good idea uh, to call it Out of Our League, which is... I love it. It's a good good kind of a title for that because the whole goal of this show is to kind of talk to people that are uh why the hell is this damn camera oh are you trying to reach out to me oh yes absolutely <laughs> yeah no i feel okay, like nice I, I got the focus problems all the time it happens man all the time uh basically this show is going to be about just talking to people um as far as the out of our league title goes it doesn't have to be anything it can be somebody like you tim who's you know you are one of the legit guys up there in the podcasting realm <laughs> that's one way to put it uh, right. other ways to put it all right hey i'm one of you guys and love to talk about video games and fun stuff <laughs> definitely and it can also be something small like our very own bennett please be excited who is way out of our league on how many times he can photoshop milk mommy onto anything it's impressive. It no. is very impressive. It's do scary. not, do not feed yeah. into him, Tim. You're just yeah. giving him more yeah. juice. <laughs> it's it's a lot, man. That is the juice that uh that, that no man should have that much of. Right. Um. So we've actually got a a pretty fun show today. I've got a list of things I kind of want to go over. Uh, small things probably take a few minutes each, but then throughout the show, I'm going to bring in various members of Simply Sassy to not only bring in their own topic, but also just kind of hang out for a bit. So it should be a pretty interesting show. So. To start off, something that we've been wanting to do for a long time and everybody keeps hounding me about, when will we get the reaction breakout for The Last Chance? Oh my god. Wait a minute. Let's see. First off, amazing work on that. That Thank was you. one of the greatest things uh, that have come from the community ever. Uh, I literally watched it in the theater with Gia, and she was just like, what the fuck? This is too good. It's too damn good. I, I don't know if there was a reaction a live reaction recorded to it it's on the post show of episode oh god i forget like 137 or something like that where it was you andy nick yeah. and joey so it's gotcha. still on the, on the post okay show. okay so it yeah. exists Dude, it we exists, do yeah. so much stuff i don't i don't remember what we show nick ever <laughs> what happens but right. but i mean so what's the question when when's there gonna be a breakout yeah. of it could we ever do that since it is behind oh, the yeah. post show we don't want to like you know take away oh Oh, if you guys want to break it out, go for it. Awesome. I, you get the full rights to do that. <laughs> thank you awesome. for making something awesome. Yeah, thank you guys for watching it. That was uh that actually came at a pretty uh tough time for me. I'd actually the week before you guys did that reaction, two of my cats died like within mm. 2 days of each other. So what? I was yeah. I it, mean, I don't want to like go into it, but how? I live out in the country uh and there are coyotes out here. Oh, we haven't no, had don't let Gia hear this. We haven't had coyote issues for like we had lost a cat like 15 years prior. That was the last time we'd lost a cat to a coyote. Oh my god. And just out of nowhere, one of them just disappears, and then two days later the other one disappears. And it's like, well, shit, that sucks. I am so sorry to hear that. That is Thank you. Man, 2020, right? 2020 sucks. But it was like the the following Tuesday or whatever when you guys recorded that show. I remember Robin posting in the group chat like, "Guys, they reacted to it live on the post show." And it's like, seriously, really? Jumped on. Since then, I've probably watched just that section of the post show. I don't know, like forty <laughs> times. I watch it like, hey, almost awesome, every man. week. It's so. I thank you so much. You guys are honestly way too good. Like I, the fact that anything we've ever done inspires other people to make stuff. It's right. just the coolest thing to me. I love it, and I, I, I will never, never not understand how much that that means. Definitely, um, I, I'm sure most of the people who are going to jump on are going to kind of probably say the same thing. But yeah, actually seeing that definitely kind of validated that work quite a bit more. Um, it took us a while to make. Actually, that was like two or three months of planning, I think, and then most of the credit goes to. Uh, Al for editing the whole thing together. Uh, ben did a lot of work. Predator, here. man. Yeah. Uh, the one shot of Shaq grabbing Andy's head that was actually Nick's face. Yeah. Ben actually went in frame by frame. Oh, and my had God. had to Photoshop Nick's face on there. That was so good. It's so fantastic. Uh, I think that one's going to be asked later, so I'm not going to go into that one. Um, one of the things I want to do with this is kind of 
get into the history of you and your love for gaming and music and movies and stuff like that. Something that obviously you guys talk about a lot on a lot of your shows, but I feel like some of that stuff is kind of swept under the rug. It's usually, hey, kind of funny, talk about video games, and that's about mm -hmm. it. Uh, so some of the cool things I want to ask you are, generally, what's an obscure video game that you don't think anybody else would really give a shit about that you actually really like? Huh. Uh, well, the first one to come to mind is a NES game called Captain Skyhawk. I don't heard know. Of that. It's uh, it's not the most obscure. It's not like no one's ever heard of it, but it's not one that's like talked about when you are thinking of like best NES games of all time or whatever. But uh, when we were growing up, uh, Kevin's mom would always take us to garage sales, and that was kind of we definitely were were on the poor side of, of <laughs> things in the Bay Area back then, um, and being able to play video games or own video games was kind of like not an option. Like, right. I was always excited to have a console, but I, I never had my own console until I was a pretty, a lot older than, than some of the kids around me. Like, I, I think it was like nine or 10 when I first got my super Nintendo. Um, okay. But Kevin had an NES and uh, he got it at a garage sale and we got the best deal ever. It was $8 for a Nintendo and 25 games. Wow yeah that is so incredible. i'll never forget going to his house and like kind of just playing through the games one by one and being we were at this point probably like five or six and just falling okay. in love with mario as you do yeah right? of course popping in zelda with the gold cartridge and being like this is so cool but then being so confused by the game because it was like way too difficult for us right. uh popping into a whole bunch of different games the ninja turtles game was such an iconic one for us because we love the ninja turtles <laughs> so much but captain skyhawk is uh this game that is uh a top-down plane shooter so you're okay. going from it like visually it's it's the screen's top down you're going from the bottom of the screen up and it's just kind of like one of those old ar arcade shooters like 1942 okay. or something like that okay. um and you go through but there was something about it that uh at the end of every level there's like a boss stage that you'd have to fight where it's like you have to take down this like base or some shit and uh th there was something about it that just really opened my imagination up a lot where being a kid flying around in the jet it's like it was an nes game it looked like shit but it really kind of felt like so much more to me and like it i thought it was so cool i felt like i was flying an x-wing like i felt like i was right. luke skywalker in star wars and it's like that totally was not what it was but that to me was the power of video games that like it can trans transport you to just a world of imagination. Another one, Paperboy, which is not obscure, but like I still put in that category of like everyone associates it associates it with a NES, even right. though it's not at all exclusive there. Yeah. But me, Kevin, and Cool Greg would play Paperboy over and over and over and try to come up with storylines for the neighbors and for all the weird things happening and like try to create reason for why the little kid's running with a knife or like all that stuff. And I don't know why, like the video game should have been enough. It should have been fun enough, but it inspired us to make fun outside of it. And I think that that's like a really cool aspect of video games that doesn't get talked about enough. Oh, I a hundred percent agree with that. Um, we used to do that all the time growing up. Me and my cousins would play games and we'd always try to come up with things like that. Like, Oh, what if this person is, you know, this happened in their past and that's why they're that way. Or, um, uh, my best friend and I used to play like uh, Mortal Kombat Armageddon on the PS2. Uh, that game yeah. was awesome. I mean, it wasn't all. It was kind of a shitty Mortal Kombat game, but like but you still... could you could like make your own character and stuff. So it was always kind of fun making your character and trying to come up with you know why does my character look like this? Why does he have these powers? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about video games. Just just kind of letting your own mind take over and being able to make it your own experience. Really. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. That was kind of just a fun icebreaker. Um, the actual real thing I really wanted to talk to you guys about it's something I've been thinking about for a long time kind of ever since this pandemic started that hasn't been really brought up much kind of funny up and comer mm -hmm. what's going on with that are you guys postponing it or have you considered other avenues of going about that yes so we, we have postponed it we did an update uh, Twitch stream a month and a half ago I want to say that kind oh. of gave an update on, on where all the things are at i definitely missed that because i don't really watch Twitch uh, that much <laughs> oh yeah and i mean i don't i don't even remember where we put it like J joey it, 
remembers this stuff way better than I do. But cool. uh, yeah, we we did an update and uh, we kind of just talked about where everything was at in terms of all the things that we promised in January. And uh, we, every year we've gotten a lot better about nailing all of the things, like, or at least most of the things. A couple right. of years ago, especially like with the whole animated show, like yeah. we really bit off more than we could chew and it kind of screwed us over in a lot of ways. And like, we made a vow to not let that happen again. <laughs> we were like, we need to sure. make sure that like, we are staying accountable for what we're presenting out there. And I think that this is the year that has been, we've gotten better and better every year, but like this year I'm really proud of, especially with the pandemic and everything where we still hit majority of the things. There are some stuff like cooking with Jen or uh, the basketball game we want to do or, or things like that, that are like, ah, oh, damn, like we really just can't do them right now. How right. we want to do them or right. winging it with the, uh, with Makuga. Um, and the up and comer thing is, is an example of that as well. Like, uh, we've done so much and, and I think that a lot of the, the community would understand like that we did so much that we didn't say we were going to do that was new and different that to not, not make up for it, but kind of like in its place in a lot of ways, but we still plan to do those things. I hope right. that makes sense. Right. Um, but yeah, so to answer your question about up and comers, we want to do it right. There's no point in just doing it to do it and get it over with like exactly. we want to use the up and comer thing as a a real kind of opportunity for people to get something on their resume like to to really kind of build it out get some experience and 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 have you know kind of a seal of approval from kind of funny which i think goes a very long way Definitely. um and uh we've we're open to to ideas like we've thought about like should, at what point should we just do it digitally? Because that's what our company is now. We're going to get a studio. When? I don't fucking know. Like, right. we're working on it. We're paying right, right now at two studios. Thankfully, that's going to end soon where our lease on the first place is going to be up. So we're going to just have nice. to move everything. And that's going to cause a whole bunch of other issues where yeah. right now the, the studio is stuck in a lot of city permitting <laughs> stuff because of COVID. And um, we aren't officially greenlit to build certain aspects of it, any aspect of it, actually. Uh, so we're just paying rent for this fucking box. Um, but soon that box is going to hold all the stuff from the, the old studio. It's just crazy to think that uh, there is a very, very, very small chance that we'll ever be in the old studio again. Like, yeah. Wow. That's something I don't think anybody's crazy. ever thought about. Yeah, like there's a good so, chance there's not going to be because we got that with like um, the the spare bedroom. We got that that final you know, here's the yeah. last game over Greggy show in that spare bedroom. Yeah, we might not get that in the old studio. It might just be we might not. Yeah, it's man. it's really it's sad. I, I wish I wish things were different, but yeah, it's uh, with where things are at right now and just the timeline we're on. Like I I don't I don't know if it's going to be possible, but yeah, with up and comer, it's like at some point we might transition that to being this type of thing, but like. That's a different opportunity. I don't think it's necessarily <laughs> the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely not as cool. So the, with the fact that we're building out the studio and that we have full intentions on going back to a studio, kind of funny, will not be a purely work from home company unless we absolutely have to for the rest of our lives. Right. Like our goal is to be in a room together. That's what we want. Our studio is about to be dope as hell. And that's going to be a great time to bring up and covers and like really have some fun. So Hopefully people understand. <laughs> I'm sure they do. I that's that's one thing I've noticed about like a lot of the hardcore the, the actual best friends out there, you know, the people that are actually who I would call best friends is they understand, you know, you guys can you guys are human beings who are, you know, you're under the same rules and regulations that everybody has to deal with. So, yeah, it's obvious you can't have, you know, people flying out from a different city to come hang out with you guys for totally. a week or whatever in this climate. I'm pretty sure everybody understands, so. Yeah. We're trying our best, and I, I hope that that's clear, that, like, we really care, and we're not trying to do things just to check off boxes. Like, we want to do these things right. Yeah, that's always good to hear. Um, that is actually kind of a good transition to the other one, because you did mention uh, how you guys do plan on going back to a studio. You don't want to be work from home at all times. Uh, everybody already knows that work from home has caused one of the worst deaths in history, uh, the death of KFAF. Uh, so I have a question here. I believe it was brought up to me from Robin GL. Uh, why did you kill party mode in KFAF, Tim? <laughs> hey man, look, the reality, the reality of it is that me killing the shows thing is a joke. Like, Absolutely. It, it's 100%. like, it's not, 
and 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 i know you guys all get that and like i i'm down to we can make the joke but it it gets rough making jokes with friends because all of a sudden it's like when it gets outside of that friend group (laughs) there there, there's context lost that of people that might not know all the inside stuff to it right yeah so it's like you guys totally get it because you're inside you know but the moment it gets like a little farther out then all of a sudden it's like, I'm an asshole that's taking away people's favorite things. There's just a lot yeah. of realities of production and of the shows that we make and the lives that we all have and the hours of a day that each of us have to be able to put towards a bunch of different things. And right. the reality is like COVID didn't kill KFAF. Like it, it right. definitely made it harder, but the, the show and the show and it, the, the iteration that it was, between Andy and Nick kind of got to the point that they felt burnt out on it. And it's like, that's okay. Like that happens. And I, the Tim kills party mode, Tim killed all this stuff. What that really is, is me looking at my team and having honest conversations with them being like, Hey man, you don't need to do this. If you don't want to like, don't feel some type of responsibility to like force this out of you because like it shows and it's, you know, not, productive like let's get you doing more of what you want and i I think that andy's really kind of hitting a stride of finding that he likes streaming a lot like he and he's i don't know if you noticed he's been streaming a lot more for kind of funny like on kind of funny's channels like i I think that a lot of that like he gets really anxious about having to come up with ideas he's one of the funniest people i know but when you have to tell someone be funny it kind of changes the whole process right yeah so as a as a leader, I'm trying to look at this and look at our team and talk to each one of them individually and see what they their needs are. And sometimes I'll have to take the 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 hit for that. Like the the jokes of Tim killed party mode and Tim killed all this stuff. Like when that does get negative, when it, it you know it is people like talking shit about me or angry at me, that's part of this whole deal. Like I hate that and I wish that wasn't the case. But yeah, I, the reality absolutely. is, I just really care a lot. We all just really care a lot, and no decision is made flippantly. Every single decision is made trying to give as many people what they want as possible. So it's like, trust me, KFAF was my favorite show we did too. <laughs> it's like, I know what that show is. I was the one that made them do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. if if I if everyone's going to say Tim killed KFAF, they also need to say Tim made KFAF. Exactly, like, exactly. You know, but the thing is, it's like, look, kind of funny is ever changing and every year we do the january 5th like switch up we don't just do that just to change things it's like there's an internal need to to kind of look at what we're doing and answer a lot of questions both individually and as a group of like what should we be doing not what are we doing what should we be doing and sometimes those answers aren't going to be fun (laughs) but exactly I think, and you know, I'm rambling here, but like, I do no, that's think that what the show is. a lot of people kind of look at kind of funny and, and, our, and our output and they're like, okay, there's kind of funny and there's kind of funny games. And especially this year, I, I see a lot of like, well, kind of funny games is killing it, but kind of funny is kind of whatever. And it's like, we're the same group of people working on both sides. So when we put energy in one place, it's going to make the other place suffer a bit and trying to find that balance can be hard. Sometimes, though, you need to lean really far to fix a problem and then go back and raise the other thing up. And I think that with Kind of Funny Games, I really felt like we hit a point there was a big problem where we were not putting out content that was to the level of what Kind of Funny Games used to be. And me and Greg were like, this is who we are. Our backbone is games. Yeah. Oh, crap. That is unfortunate. Oh god, I hope that was just Discord and not my internet. <laughs> Technical problems, always fun. Always so much fun. Um, what I was saying, yeah. ready to jump back into it. What oh, I was saying is that uh, when it comes to the kind of funny side of things and the kind of funny game side of things, like we are, like kind of funny games is our backbone of like when we left IGN and started kind of funny games it was kind of like hey now we get to talk about what everyone's looking to us for and we have built kind of funny next to that or in the background of it kind of and like we're very proud of that and there is the synergy between the two but i would say that they hit a point that greg and i were like we need to make kind of funny games 
kind of a standout. Like we need to be firing on all cylinders, kicking ass and having an amazing team of people. And that is when we really were like, okay, blessing is our guy. Like right. we need to work towards this and, and get him in um, as our first ever, like full on kind of funny games host that we are hiring for that reason. And part of that also happened to be around the time Imran uh, got let go from Game Informer. And the day that happened, we hit up Imran and we're like, let's fucking talk, man. Like, this could be awesome. And so then that happened. And then, you know, this year started, this year's the biggest year in video game history, man. Like, to look at all the games that came out, the next gen launches, Cyberpunk, all this, like, we got to hit this hard. And we've hit it fucking hard, man. Like, I'm so proud of what we've done this year. But with that, that means that resources and energy that would have been put towards the kind of funny side just doesn't exist like it's just not there and we didn't let it die it's just like there was just concessions that had to be made um and it's it's hard the balance is really hard but we're we're working on it and i I think that you know everything is kind of building a foundation and once you get a step done then you're able to move on like what a lot of people don't notice is how much more content we're actually making now than ever before where like First Impressions is now a weekly show. And I feel like people don't notice that because we didn't make a giant big deal of like, here's the new show that's happening weekly. It's like, but First Impressions has happening, been happening weekly as a podcast and as a video uh, for months now. And on top of that, we've been doing at least weekly Twitch streams. And it's like, we're building all of this stuff out. And like, we're trying to mesh the kind of funny and kind of game side in a, in a way that like feels authentic to us uh with that twitch content so i'm rambling a lot but just know that every decision made there's a lot of conversations and a lot of thought put into it and sometimes it might not be immediately clear why we're doing it but we might be building a foundation for something cool in the future definitely and thank you for that answer uh, the reason I, I i brought that up is because that is something we have joked about in the past um I know there was a couple of photoshops you guys uh, showed on Internet Explorers a couple of weeks ago. The uh, oh god, I think it was Phil who did the John uh-huh. Wick. Uh, so good, so good. And so we've we've made some jokes about that on our not KFA Photoshop challenge videos, and there has been some like small blowback from that where we have to explain like, hey, it's a joke. We don't actually think yeah. Tim did this. So that's all yeah, I wanted to bring yeah, that yeah. up. And I appreciate the long answer, kind of going into detail on what that happened and, and, and more of them being burned out. The realities out. of it yeah. all, man. Because that's something that happens. You know, people get burned out on stuff. Like, it doesn't matter how much you love something. If you if you go too hard into that thing and that's all you do, there's going to come a point where you just, you can't do it anymore. Like, I, I know that firsthand as well as almost anybody. So it's nice kind of hearing that more uh, in-depth reality of the situation. And also, to be fair to them, like, it's not just burnout. Like, that is definitely it. But it's also just like a frustration with it. Like, it's, if doing something isn't exciting for you yeah my whole philosophy kind of funny is like why are we doing it then like if you aren't enjoying what you're doing and it's stressing you out and it's it's like it's like no man we could do something else like (laughs) let's figure it out let's let's find a new fire a new thing to kind of like give you that energy definitely because that's something i think most people have noticed is kfaf the whole magic of that show was having nick and andy in the same room and while mm. I still loved it, you know, work from home, it definitely lost a little bit of that luster that we were so familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, thank you for that answer. That that was incredible. Um, I'm going to try to get our first guest in here, which will be uh, Ben at Please Be Excited, someone who is... I'm excited. Oh, I am well, he's excited. already here. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right when I sent it. Ben, what's up? What's happening? How you doing, man? Good, thanks. Good. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Dude, awesome to have you here with me. I'm so stoked about this. This is awesome. All right. So, Ben, uh, I know you had a topic you wanted to bring up, so go right ahead. Oh, yes. So, Ben from the Please Be Excited Media Press Pool. Um, (laughs) Just a a question just around work-life balance. I mean, obviously, it's kind of funny. You guys put out an insane amount of fantastic content. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Um, and as someone that sort of works crazy hours and obviously puts out a lot of content, I just probably like a lot of people sometimes struggle with the work life balance. So I was just wondering maybe if you've got any tips or uh, anything that you might, you guys might have that you might do. 
Uh, I mean, I think the first tip is acceptance. You know, it's like really kind of being able to look at yourself and understand that there is a problem and that that a work-life balance is extremely important uh, for both sides of that equation. Like, I think that having a life makes your work better and having work makes your life better. <laughs> um, I, I think that uh, this... It's almost a cheating thing to say, but it's like to have someone to share it with, I think helps a lot. Like having Gia, having a partner, and it could be a friend, it could be anybody, but like have, for me in particular, having Gia to talk everything through kind of really does help me prioritize my time um, and what I should be doing. And and I, I do think that there doesn't need to be a delineation hardcore line between what is work and what is life at all times i think that there's a a percentage balance that everybody has a different answer for uh where i would say for me it's probably like a 20 percent life 20 percent work and 60 percent a gray area between the two but that's just because I'm lucky enough that my job is so fun and so much of my job involves watching and review movies with Gia or playing games or watching movie trailers or talking about the things that I love. It's still work, but it's still life, if that makes sense. But there is 20% that is just work. And there is 20% that is, I need to take a break and not do any of that stuff. I just need to chill. You know, and maybe those numbers aren't fully accurate, but there's that's it's somewhere in there, and that's my balance. I think that everyone needs to find what works for them. Absolutely, great answer. Now, leading on to that, I had a sub question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, so, I have this possible theory that Greg Miller possibly could be a clone or maybe a robot. He's just obviously everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I want to know: Have you got any evidence potentially to sort of back that up? Um, I don't have any evidence that he is not one of those things. Uh, he is a machine. Like when it comes to him being a human being, it, it's funny knowing Greg for as long as I have and being as close to him as I am. Like it's weird to say that Greg Miller is one of the most authentic human beings I've ever met. And when the guy that you see on camera is Greg, a hundred percent. However, when Greg's not on camera, He's a completely different person. And that's weird because it's completely hypocritical what I just said, right? But both of those, I guess it's the work-life balance thing. Like that, it, it really is a good sub-question there. It's like Greg's work-life balance is very different than mine. And Greg, it goes into this, like, you would never believe this, but off camera, Greg's pretty quiet. <laughs> like <laughs> Greg kind of keeps to himself. And he kind of just is, he's way more of a heads down guy. Um, and like, he just gets his work done. And that's not to say that he's standoffish. That's not to say that he doesn't talk and he's not fun. That he's not Greg Miller. Cause he is still the same guy. It's just, it's a very, very, very different energy. And that is all you see the shock in me and your Nick's face. When Greg pulls, goes into that dark hole in his head and pulls out the Busan or just pulls out one of these insane <laughs> things. And it, is so shocking to us because we had just seen the other Greg Miller five minutes ago and how it can switch that, that quickly, but seamlessly. And again, authentically, I think is so, so crazy because both of the Gregs are amazing, fantastic people. And I, he has figured out that the balance of those two alter egos so great that they aren't different people. They are the same person. Uh, so that's a, a weird serious answer to your your funny joke question but the real the real thing for me is i don't know because he might be both a robot and a clone <laughs> so there's some credibility to it you know it could be yeah, possible totally totally because <laughs> that is the other thing in terms of the the clone like i don't understand like i know how much we all work it kind of funny and some of us work a lot more than others that's not to say that that's a, a good or bad thing or that even matters some people do the work that they need to do then there's the people that just just go so above and beyond greg is one of those people and i am always shocked because i know how tired i get when i have to do like, i look at the calendar and if, if i'm on three shows in one day i'm like oh no 
Like <laughs> this is going to be a rough one. And uh, usually, by the time the show's over, I'm like, oh, that was awesome. Because you, you get a you get a high when you're doing shows that like if there's too long of a break in between, that's when everything falls apart. But if you're just going back to back to back, then it's just like that's when the gold content's going to come. With Greg, somehow he looks at those days and like is just like, cool, let's go. Oh, also, I have a call to take after that. And then I'm going to host EA Play. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> how? How do you do all of that? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, that was pretty much my question. So I also just want to say a huge shout out to you and everyone at Kind of Funny. Dude, um, shout out to you guys, all, man. All the work you do. You guys honestly make it all worth it. I was just telling him, it's like the fact that anything we do inspires other people to make art or make <laughs> jokes or memes, whatever you want to call it. It is so, so great. And Ben, your stuff is always like, it, it brings so much joy to my life. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Man, you should see the... Uh the 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 sea of stuff that we have to see first before those <laughs> those winners get pushed through dude it's it's bad that's hilarious for every five great things you see we see about a hundred horrible like, concoctions yeah. oh there are some some that aren't safe for public you know no, oh, they're God. not safe for anybody they're terrible yeah <laughs> awesome well thank you so much for stopping by ben um thank you hope things are going well over in kiwi land for you absolutely buddy can cool. i do a quick plug before i go yeah do it um so this is the this week we actually released the very first episode of the official unofficial new girl podcast um hey. so head over to the um or obviously i'll be tweeting it please be excited on there as well head over there check it out we've also got a fantastic table read it was probably some of the most fun i've had back in content with a whole lot of kind of funny best friends uh that'll be released at some point probably this week or next week so keep in keep it locked for that as well awesome good shit awesome thanks again tim thank you so much gadge cheers thank you, ben. See you man have a good day buddy bye cheers bye bye i realized like almost halfway through that i didn't change the overlay so it's still the two-person podcast with th three different oh, yeah. squares all right let's see if we can get uh al in here awesome awesome glad ben was able to stop by there he is the predator how's it going buddy what's up Dude. man how you doing good good yeah. i don't know why my camera's doing that sorry <laughs> <laughs> you were in like the infrared it's like the you're yeah. you're out there in the hunting grounds <laughs> man that's a game i haven't played in a long time <laughs> <laughs> all right how you doing good good how you doing tim good man good you know just uh just living it up it's a saturday oh my god that is the biggest cup i've ever seen and i appreciate it show yeah. the world that cup this guy that's a good cup man <laughs> solid cup my new <laughs> there we go drinking a good old can of coca-cola right now hell yeah man. Felt like i had to nice. i'm loving the the setup al the the wave mic three let's go yep um and i put this special <laughs> zelda art, arts book just just as a shout out to you hell yeah man those books are great Yep. So if I you want to know, Gear Solid one as well. if you want to know the type of person Al is, he bought that microphone for our podcast. Oh, for this podcast? Well, the general yep. simply sassy shows. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, good. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. awesome. It was it's like, a great mic. First time I got him on, he's like, "Yeah, I bought this mic for this show." I'm like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, that's <laughs> dedication. That's, that's the reason yeah. I wasn't a Patreon producer <laughs> one month is because I had to buy this microphone." I'm like, "Holy crap, that's, great, dude, that's awesome!" No, it, it's it's that, such a good mic, man. We're we're lucky. Elgato hooked us all up with them, and I I'm so appreciative of that because we all sound so much better now. Yeah. Please, Elgato, um, I need help. I'm, that's I'm, a good mic too, though. I love my that's Blue Yeti. Mic. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's a great mic. Yeah. Shout out to the good old Best Buy discount. Hell right, yeah. <laughs> all right al uh, what do you have to discuss with tim today uh i have a couple of questions uh tim i've always heard you talk about the new super mario brothers uh <coughs> franchise the new uh -huh. the series of the 2d side scrollers and you always say they're in dire need of an update and mm -hmm. you want to see them differently like what exactly are you talking about are you talking about like just a different look or because i honestly think that that series can evolve into something or i mean i'm not quite sure what you're looking for 
in terms of, of like an update of that. And I would like to hear more about that. So definitely, I mean, New Super Mario Brothers U is one of the best 2D Mario games ever made. Uh, but that is in spite of its look. Because, uh, yeah, what yeah. I'm talking about is very, very specifically tied to the art style. And it's not just that, oh, I wish it looked different because we're seeing such a sterile look to Mario that has looked the same for a decade plus now. Like, kind of what happened was Mario 64 happened and defined this, like, new look of what Mario should be after the like 2d games and they just kind of have stuck with that they've never really played around too much like anytime they add stuff it's just the same look with new outfits oh it's the same mario but now he's wearing a cat suit you know whereas when you look back to the original mario games like mario 1 mario 3 mario world each one of them had such a distinct look to it and I think that the look changed the vibe and feel of the game and allowed for gameplay to kind of work around the the, the world created by the, the visual nature of the game. Uh, Mario 3 being a stage play where every platform was being held up by ropes and strings and stuff kind of gave it a, a vibe of its own, right, that allowed the, the look to dictate the the worlds and the levels that you're going through yoshi's island being this like kids coloring book style right like right, right, that right. that gave it a vibe which changed the sound of the music which changed i mean that's a totally different game but like still i would want to see that from a new 2d mario because we've had so many 2d marios now and especially now that mario maker exists we have <laughs> unlimited 2d mario in that style so i would want to see something that that is radically different for Mario that looks different, sounds different, still plays the same, but because it looks and sounds so different, it feels different. Right. Gotcha. Also, another retro uh, <laughs> franchise I want to ask about, and I know that's dear and near and dear to both our hearts, is Sonic. What do you expect from Sonic in the next generation? <laughs> A good what do you want to see and what do you think you'll see what do i expect nothing yeah. good i expect a bunch of bullshit what do i want <laughs> sonic mania 2 man sonic mania was yep. fantastic it was uh honestly at this point it's my favorite sonic game i don't think it's perfect there are still some things and and they they made a lot of changes in the sonic mania plus dlc that came out but i never dove too deep into that um but i some of the stuff I really enjoyed about Sonic Mania was how much love and care they put into making it a new experience that respected the classics. And, you know, so many people want to hate on Sonic and say that it's always been bad. That's simply not true. Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 are really, really, really great games. And Sonic 3 especially, I think, had so many elements going for it that presented this 2D platformer as if it was like a epic cinematic experience like starting levels off and ending the levels with unique custom animations that would transition into the next level just made it feel so much bigger and like more important than than normal 2d platformers especially back then and sonic mania took that and ran with it but they made the bizarre choice and i i think that it was like a, a time like a budget of time thing uh where not every level had it and some levels just kind of started without an animation. It was like, why would you do that? Like, you were so close to having this, like, work all the way through be such an amazing experience. Um, and I think that some of the the boss fights in, in Mania didn't, the new boss fights didn't live up to um, the hype of the rest of the game. Um, and also the last level, the Monarch Zone, I think it's called, was like, a little too different from a gameplay perspective compared to the rest of the stages. And I, I don't really like when games do that. Um, but I would love a Sonic Mania 2 that kind of goes further. Like now that Sonic Mania has looked back and remixed so many classic levels like Chemical Plants and, and Green Hill Zone and all that, while still having a couple new zones, like uh, I think it was called Press Plant Zone in this one, uh, in, in Mania, I'd love to see a game with all new levels that have that oh same God. type of uh, like Studioopolis zone uh, in, in Sonic yeah. Mania is awesome it is one of the best zones in sonic history and again going back to the mario conversation it's because the look and sound and all of it felt authentically sonic but it was brand new right. and, and that's something that i haven't experienced with new super mario brothers 
uh, in a very long time because last time was that Starry Night level where mm-hmm. it was like, oh, I've never seen something like this before in Mario, but that's one level out of 120 or whatever it is. I, I would love to see a Sonic Mania 2, and man, it 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 hurts to think that we might not ever get it. Um, okay. Uh, I wouldn't hear the end of it if I didn't uh, ask the, this question, because my brother, when he found out that I'm going to be talking to you, he said, please make sure you mention this game. And, and Gage will back me up on this, I'm sure, if he, ha- okay. if he hasn't already asked you that question. Have you played Dragon's Dogma? I have not. I've not played. Oh Dragon's my Dogma. god! I mean, it's the battle director uh, from Ryuta, Ryuta Suzuki from uh-huh. Final Fantasy, and it's Capcom. And yeah. I, I let Gage take over, but yeah, my brother wanted to know why and are you excited? And you should get into it. He said. Okay. Okay. So what's funny about Dragon's Dogma <laughs> is back when I worked at IGN, uh, it was one of the first <laughs> assignments I ever had as a video producer to go to Capcom headquarters and capture direct feed wow. for this. So this is back when I was on the other side of shit. Thank God I'm not on that side anymore because I hate tech stuff like this. It is, oof, God bless you for dealing with it. Um, but it was Thank it you. was me and Mitch Dyer. And uh, Mitch was the one playing. And I just had to sit there for hours just watching him play. Um, mm. And it, it, it looked really cool. But at some point, I was just like, I'm so over this. <laughs> like, Because like, it's not like it's a let's play. It's not like you're watching someone play a game and interact. It was him with headphones on playing while i'm sitting off just kind of just watching without hearing it it's like yeah <laughs> cool i i what's highly, your take on dragon's dogma i highly recommend that game for anybody who's into pretty much any sort of rpg if you have a love for final fantasy of of legend of zelda of uh kingdoms of amalur mm-hmm. elder scrolls lord of the rings pretty much anything that's kind of fantasy related uh dragon's dogma uh, it's primarily Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, which is what's widely available now, takes these intricacies from all these games and kind of combines them together. You have this amazing character customization that you not only do you get to create your own character, you get to create your main pawn, which is like uh, the Arisen character can have three pawns, essentially like side uh, uh-huh. companions or whatever. But you, get to, you get to make one of them. So you have your character, and then you get to fully customize your main pawn, but then the other two pawns cool. can either be recruited from around the world or they can be other players main pawns so you can create your full four-person party with your two characters and then the main companion from like two of your friends accounts they'll gain experience gain knowledge and they actually that's one of the cool things is when you use someone else's pawn or they use your pawn in their world they gain knowledge on certain types of enemies that maybe you haven't encountered yet so when they come back and you go fight a uh, a drake for the first time they're gonna go hey i know how to fight this guy uh shoot that spot because some uh, other player used them to fight a drake before there's That's all this cool. cool stuff like that the class system the size of the world i've played through that game across the ps3 and the ps4 <laughs> oh god um 18 19 times uh got wow the, got the platinum trophy in it uh I've done hard mode. I've done the speed run mode. I've unlocked pretty much everything. Wow, you are into this. <laughs> it, there's, there's still stuff that I'm, I'm still discovering. He hasn't brought it up already. That's yeah. so funny. It's, it's an incredible. A, there's game. a Netflix anime? Eh. Yep. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched like half of the first episode. I'm like, this is bad. This is really bad. Damn, but that sucks. Game is fantastic. One of Troy Baker's best performances. Uh, oh, okay. Especially if you play as him because he doesn't actually even talk. He just goes, ha, ha, ha. Granted, you can love also it. make him the main pawn, so he does have dialogue. It's fantastic, though. I, I love that game. That's cool. I definitely recommend checking it out. A- anybody out there, if you like good games, play Dragon's Dogma. Just saying. <laughs> uh, just wait for Robin to listen to this episode. He's going to be like, oh, God damn it, he brought up Dragon's Dogma. <laughs> you didn't, Gage. I, I did. Yeah, but then I just <laughs> went on for five minutes on about it. So. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Anything else, Al? Um, Any I more have fun a, stuff? a big one, but I don't know if we have time for it. It's one fifty-seven. Uh, we still got one more person after Al. Go um, for it. Okay. Yeah, ten- awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, so I feel like what each uh, <laughs> console manufacturer is doing for next gen is very different, Tim. And mm-hmm. I would love to hear what you think because I feel like Microsoft are doing the cloud thing and being available everywhere, mm-hmm. like easy access and everything. And uh, Sony's sticking to like old school, just like this is a game console. 
Uh, Nintendo's doing their Nintendo thing. <laughs> As Toys always. To life, <laughs> their Nintendo Toys thing. to Life, portability, and all of that. Was stuff. Limited time purchasing but... of 30th anniversary games or whatever. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so what do you see? Okay, and also, so that tied to a little, uh, another thing I wanted to bring up was, like, in terms of 3D gaming and or online gaming being defining fa uh, aspects of like previous generations. What do you think will be the defining aspect of this next ge coming generation? Ooh, okay. Um, so starting with that, I think, I think the defining element of this generation is, I mean, this is going to sound like a joke if you've been listening to kind of funny games daily, but it's going to be convenience. <laughs> like, the entire next gen is is built around a bunch of different things that are essentially, hey, how should this console work? Yeah, make it work that way. If something should work a certain way, it should just work. Okay. And you know, I think there's still a lot of questions about the PS5. Uh, whereas we, I know from experience now with the Series X that everything they're talking about, the quick resume, the up. The, updated uh, resolutions and refresh rates and all that stuff, it just works. And it works like it should. Backwards compatibility, it just works. Like your uh, peripherals, whether they're old Xbox controllers or new ones, they just work. And that is so awesome. And I think on PlayStation side, that's not all going to be true. But right. my gut tells me that like give it a little time and the majority of the things that actually matter for that ecosystem will work that way. Um, but I also think that this is going to be the generation that the PC master race conversation and, and th this is going to be the generation that PC gaming finally joins the conversation of gaming not, and it is in a separate thing. It's not like, oh, there's console gamers, but then there's also PC gamers like forever. Like if I were to talk about um like the platforms, we say, oh, Nintendo, Xbox, and uh, PlayStation. We don't say PC, even though PC is a huge market that people have been playing games in forever, right? I think we're finally hitting a convergent point where PCs, gaming PCs, are becoming uh, a bit easier to wrap your head around, and consoles are becoming more like gaming PCs. So there's an education that I think has happened a lot. And I think streaming has had a lot to do with it. I mean, the fact that we're all sitting here right now with mic setups, like this whole work from home thing changed everyone's home setup to some extent, right? And I feel like Absolutely. you only need so many pushes to care about these little things. The amount of people I've seen buy LG OLED TVs in the last month to gear up for uh, next gen blows my mind because they're doing that because they're trying to get the, because everyone's saying they're the ones that have HDMI 2.1, which will allow the variable refresh rate and blah, blah, blah. And that's just all great. I'm stoked about it. I'm a tech guy when it comes to that type of shit. Like I want the, the latest and greatest, right? I think that Greg, the Greg Millers of the world, they don't fucking know until they know, until they're told right. this is what you got to do. And until they see it, until it's these buzzwords of you, there's levels of expectation uh, where you're going to expect to get 60 frames per second. And you're going to expect to get like 1440p is something that Greg Miller would have never known until three months ago when everyone was talking about it. Whereas PC gamers have been talking about it for years. Right. So I think yeah. that there's the education mixed with convenience and mixed with all this. But I think that this generation is going to be the convergence of PC, PC gamers being talked about in, in the same conversation. I think that there's going to be much less of a uh, either or it's going to be both. Yeah, that's a thank you, Tim. That is a really good point, especially now with those fat SSDs. We're finally getting in consoles. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man! Ah, oh, what was it? Episode two or three? The SAS cast where I explained why that's so great. I think it was one of your first episodes with us. Yeah, it might have been the third SAS cast. I think. Yeah, I just went into detail. I'm like, this is why next gen's gonna be great, and I'm like going over detail essentially kind of mirroring everything mark cerny said about the ssd and how it's going to fundamentally change level design and stuff like that it was yeah uh, it was a lot of random uh mumbo jumbo i don't think anybody gave a shit about but it was fun to talk about <laughs> hey, it helped me like i totally sure. had no clue that it's going to change how games and levels are, are developed yeah. in terms of like accessing that ssd and all of that good stuff definitely
Yeah, that's one thing I'm very excited for. I I haven't mentioned it yet on this show or to you, Tim, but I, I am working on a game right now with Unreal Engine. Oh, uh, well, awesome, man. I'm working on like one series project, and then I got a couple of side things I'm just kind of testing and messing around with. And boy, let me tell you, hearing about those specs with the SSDs and everything, whew, yeah. it's going to make life so much easier. Oh, man, I'm so stoked. It's going to be fantastic. Al, thank you so much for joining us today, buddy. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you for everything. Thank you for, for helping make kind of funny what it is, dude. Thanks, buddy. My pleasure. See you guys later. Bye. Later, See buddy. You, man. All right, so now we just have Kamel, hopefully, but apparently he's playing Among Us, so I'm not sure if he's actually going to be able to jump in or not. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. There he is. <laughs> I thought I'd do the Ben thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, dude? How you doing? Oh, God. Uh, good. How are you? Good, um, man. Good. I thought I'd uh, start off by saying thank you very much for coming onto the show on a Saturday. Of course, uh, man. I'd, I'd struggle. I'd struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be well, asleep at this time. Thank you for, for coming in on a Saturday. So, <laughs> Yeah, no, That's I awesome. just had a sort of couple questions really conscious mm -hmm. of time. But I think, I think the, the one thing that was really on my mind is how is Kind of Funny in 2020? As in, what were your goals for this year? And how have they changed with, you know, the sort of global pandemic we're in at the moment? I mean, in the, the biggest way, I mean, God, there's so many answers I can give. But like the, the, yeah. the biggest way is that all of us have become a lot more self-sufficient when it comes mm. to a knowledge of how to run things. I love that all of us now know how to stream, know how to set up these shots and, and have, you know, check your mic levels, do all that. And that goes all the way from Joey to Andy to Greg to Nick to me, like everybody. Um, and that's that's great because it just allows – the more you understand about everyone else's job on your team, the more you can, like, be able to solve problems and not get frustrated and not cause new issues, right? So. Yeah. I'm very proud of all that. I think that once we do go to the studio, we're all going to have a, a newfound understanding um, of everyone else's life. So I think that that's, that's really important. Um, the biggest thing, the biggest change or like thing that would have happened that totally didn't happen is we would be in the new studio by now. Uh, if the, if all this didn't happen, if mm. the plan was, and I can talk about this now, cause didn't fucking happen so who cares but like exclusive the plan, people <laughs> yeah the exclusive for another world i mean the plan very much was that we have a um that we the the studio would have been built out over the year and mm. by august it was supposed to be 90 percent done that by october it was going to be a hundred percent done and we were going to use two months the november and december to move in, start building everything out, start planning everything for whatever our January big push was going to be. Um, mm -hmm. And then we were going to target uh, sometime between January and June next year as the, the big party of having everyone come out and like really, yeah. really, really blow it out. Um, that all is not Gone. the case <laughs> yeah. at all. It sucks. Uh we, I was, I was telling him a little bit that like the, the studio right now is just, it's an empty box that we're paying for. We yeah. can't do anything. The, the city permits are holding us back from building. We're finally, finally, finally getting close to that being over. Like, God, there's been like probably 15 back and forths of permits and like red lines and us being like, all right, I guess we have to fix this. All right, I guess we got to fix that. And like the amount of things that you would not believe that we have to deal yeah. with, like, it's just, it's insane. And so many of them are important. So many of them are good. Like it's a lot of ADA stuff, making sure that it's wheelchair accessible and all that, which is great. But some of the stuff that comes with that is just like, oh man, like, okay, but we want to do that. But you're telling us we need to build a ramp on our neighbor's property. That ain't going to fly. <laughs> like, like, I don't know what, what we're supposed to do. It's that type of stuff yeah. that, uh, and uh, we've been, you know, Nick's been really working hard and uh, it's it's going to be fucking awesome, guys. Like when this studio is done, it's going to be unreal. It's going to be unbelievable. And I can't wait to be there with the, with our team to be able to hang out, to be able to to be actually on set with people and talk to people and 
And because uh, you sort yeah. of lose some energy, I guess, when you're doing it remotely. <clears throat> and, and I guess, like, I, I know Nick and Andy have been particularly good about trying to keep that energy, but it's not the sort of same when you're like webcam to webcam as you are person to person. I mean, it's a good totally... example is guy, um, guy, sorry, that's my boss. <laughs> Uh, Greg yeah. being on, on, on set with Andy and, and Kevin and start laughing about the Dr. Robot thing or whatever mm. it was. Yeah. And him, him going absolutely crazy. You're not going to get that same sort of thing, thing over a webcam than you are sort of face to face. Yeah. You know, it's weird. Like, I'm probably the only person that I've heard with this opinion, but like, I mm. actually don't think that the over the webcam stuff is worse than the no i wouldn't say it's worse it's different. I, I think it's yeah. different and it's like there i do miss it i miss being with the team however i do think that this for, there's it's pros and cons i get yeah. the argument that we talk over ourselves here and the delay kind of makes things awkward however that was also the case in real life and like nick would cut us off no matter what anyway <laughs> it's true. Yeah. so it's like i actually feel like i get to say more and i get to like get my opinion heard a bit more with this style because mm -hmm. we have the whole hand raising and we we are able to kind of like uh just th th we're a little bit more cognizant we're hearing everyone in our ears with our headsets that we don't normally do so it's like i i, I feel like the content is actually better because we are a lot more uh equipped to pay attention to each other and to like have a vibe and a rhythm um but again i love being at the same table with people and fuck vibe fuck rhythm fuck all that we're just having fun and who cares if we're talking or screaming over each other the other or whatever but the I new studio is going to be awesome I, I, I guess you can get more guests on as well now compared to what you would have been able to do if you just had oh yeah to come to the studio and whatnot. oh my god well let me put it this way x cast would not exist the way that, like I like with Snowbike Mike. Like mm -hmm. I've been trying to get Snowbike Mike to be able to work with us in some form for so long, and it's hard because he's in Tahoe, which is close to us, but far, it's like a four-hour drive. Like anytime yeah. he comes to go on Games Daily or anything, it's a four-hour drive one way. <laughs> Unless there's a snowstorm, then he's there then, overnight. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. this has been an awesome opportunity. And I, I do think that when we go back to the studio, that mm -hmm. there will still be some shows that we do like this. Yeah. Or maybe sometimes. Like maybe a majority of them are in studio, but there's exceptions this way or that way. But I'm not planning on getting rid of this setup. So... I mean, why would you? It's I'm excited. Yeah, exactly. It's awesome. Exactly. I love it but so if you much. Get rid of it, I'll give you my personal address. I'll... <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just, just moving on that then. Um, mm -hmm. You sort of talked about people sort of becoming more self-sufficient and also the January big push. Mm -hmm. What is kind of funny's big focus for next year? Uh, because I don't think we're going to be out of this like by summer, for example. Yeah. I think it's going to go yeah. on a lot longer than we thought. And number two, sort of like... Um, has has that meant that people have got less workloads now? Is everyone able to manage things better, or is it even tougher? You know, because you're it's producing different. more content. It's different. Um, I, I I know personally, I my workload is a lot more than it was. Um, just well, because kills shows, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, it's like 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 really like uh, it's. I mean. It, Jokes aside, that whole thing, like mm. having to look at this all and the strategy of it and the business of it all, like that takes up so much more time when I'm not able to just talk to people like real quick. Hey, Joey, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. Hey, hey Nick, like, blah, like having to do separate phone calls with each person and like there's, mm. there's just a runaround. And then the thing is, it's not like this just changed our lives. It changed everyone's life. So yeah. what used to be a standard business phone call I would do with like advertisers or whatever now has turned into things where I, I need to set up a zoom call and it's like, well, we use discord. Okay. Well, there, someone's on Google hangouts. Like, oh, and it's like before it was just a fucking phone call. You know what I mean? Like there's always just like layers that complicate everything. Um, mm. But again, it's just different. Like we're just, we're, I mean, I'm used to it at this point, like again, for better or worse, um yeah. and i'm very lucky that i have a setup that it's not annoying like i can be as loud as i want and people aren't gonna like yell at me um whereas like a couple it had corona hit last year when i was in my last place we'd be screwed it was me and gia living yeah. literally in a garage like in someone's garage it would have been yeah. horrible um but in terms of 2021 uh it, it's an interesting question of what's the focus and what's the push uh yeah. 
a, a little behind the scenes thing for kind of funny. Like we do this thing called Coco, uh, which is short for content conference. We okay. first did it at IGN. And uh, essentially what it was at IGN was an all hands meeting where everyone that works at IGN, the entire company would take three days off of work to go to an offsite somewhere and kind of sit, talk about everything, come up with plans, try to see what's working, what's not, what should we be doing, all this stuff. And it was the biggest waste of time of all time. It was so <laughs> poorly managed. It was so so yeah. poorly ran. All of us were like, why the fuck are you wasting our time? This is such bullshit. Because we'd sit and there'd be all these like bullet points and calls to action and then nothing would get done ever. Hmm. When we left IGN, me and Greg specifically were like, we're going to keep Coco. We're going to do it every year, at least once, uh, hopefully twice. And we are going to make sure that it counts. We're going to make sure that it's a good use of people's time, that we are hearing everyone out, and that we are acting on what is decided. And that is how Kind of Funny has been working for the last six years. Um, and so it's always around October that we have this. And this year, it's a little bit different. This year, instead yeah. of doing a big meeting, it's going to be a, a meeting of all of us in a Zoom or in a, in a Discord. And then I, I'm going to do one-on-one -on -one talks with every single person kind of seeing like where you at what do you want to be what content are you in right now that you like what content are do, are you in that you don't like like it's all this stuff of trying to balance and figure out who wants what uh mm -hmm. because the team matters more than anything like uh, it really if you don't care about doing something you shouldn't be doing it like we have enough passionate talented people that we should be able to find the right place for everybody right um yeah. so with that like we're, we're, we're having a lot of conversations right now. We're trying to figure out what the plan is. Obviously, I would love to be able to do a huge thermometer Patreon push like we always do, <laughs> like with a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, like, those those that, are pretty funny. It's, it's so fun. And that stuff, like it actually pushes us and gets us to where we need to be. We want to hire more people. We want to, you know, make more content. Like even <laughs> just little things. Like we, we want our social media feeds to have clips from our shows. That requires time for someone to do that and paying someone to do that and all that like mm -hmm. i'd love to have that that funding you know um so we need to figure out good things to offer to get funding it's going to be a little different this year like i don't know i don't know what that stream looks like i don't know what that thermometer looks like i don't think we're going to be what asking does, for nearly as much as we normally do what does remote bongo and kevin look like <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm saying there's a lot of big questions a lot of big questions yeah. we're going to have to find out the answers to but but i will say that <clears throat> Where my gut is right now, and all of this could change, but I do think that 2021 is going to be about looking at our situation and being realistic and making the best content we possibly can, given the situation. Mm -hmm. Having said that, that means that we're not going to be in the new studio till at least, I mean, at least June, if I'm being honest. Like, yeah, it, it won't even like be that. done at this point, but like, at least June, we're going to be working from home. Mm -hmm. If we're working from home, what content should we be doing working from home? And I think a big thing is Twitch streams. I think that uh, being able to be live, hang out, play games, talk to the chat, more things like Internet Explorers, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I've been debating a lot in my head about like what, what our content plan looks like across the board. Uh, but things like the Photoshop challenge from KFAF, like how do we keep that fun and that energy but take away any of the stress of it? You know, yeah. like how do like what if that was just like a thing we did on stream and it's just like we do that once a week. We don't need to make a whole show. Like it's not like an hour long thing. It's just that's just a. I mean, it's my favorite part of KFA. I love it. It's so you. great. You know. Yeah. Uh, but that's the thing is like there's so many just. We're gonna get creative. We're gonna get weird, yeah. and I think that it, it might be different than things that we've seen in the past. Uh, that kind mm -hmm. of funny, but it might not. Who the hell knows? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it certainly ha has been a big change. I think, well, for myself, obviously, for my job, having to remote remote work from home, but also for you guys having to look at your content and be like, what's going to fit this sort of format and what isn't mm -hmm. going to fit this format? Um, just quickly before I go into the games sort of question mm -hmm. that I had, um, I know Gage is in these Jeff Keighley sort of um, uh, video calls every week, and I think they sort of discuss what the uh, game awards should look like. Is, is, that, is that correct, Gage? Yeah, yeah. Have you thought about for these um, Coco things, having a separate one, maybe um, reaching out to some best friends, telling them to come into the call and, and sort of discuss about what sort of content you should be making? Or what, uh, 
I'll ask that in one second. Time. Hold on. Wait, what? Do you work with Keely? No, I don't know him personally. Oh. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I wish. No, so he's been doing like the the weekly um, every Sunday at one p.m. He has these webinars. The hosts for uh, mm-hmm. Game Awards. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, he's been bringing in special guests and stuff. Last week it was Phil Spencer and Gabe Newell, which was mm-hmm. incredible hearing their banter. But yeah, I've been going to those almost every week. So everybody, awesome. everybody in Simply Sassy, uh, basically calls him my new best friend, Jeff. Got it. That's so, funny. Yeah, very funny. Very funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the thing about getting getting the community involved <laughs> is we do. It's just mm-hmm. in uh different ways. Like it's not yeah. the way of like actually getting people on the call, uh, because. Admin, not man number one, I guess. <laughs> it's, so, I mean, I'm trying to, like, figure out the right order of how to answer this question. First off, I want to say the Patreon uh, polls that we do. Every year, we do a Patreon poll. We do a public poll. Um, and that is the basis. That is where all the meeting starts. Like, that's where the entire conversation begins of what should we be doing because we should listen to the people. We should listen to what they actually want. Apply that to the realities of the team and the business and the strategy and the blah, 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 all that stuff, right? So the those Patreon things, like, do not take them lightly. Like, those Patreon polls, uh, questionnaires, whatever, surveys, that's the word. Me and Joy sit through and read as many, if not all of them, as we possibly can. And mm-hmm. we look at trends. We look at anything. We run the data. We, like, we see a lot. And, like, there, you'd be shocked at some of the things that we find out <laughs> about it all. But our decisions are made based on that as a, a starting point. So, um, so there's that. The other thing is the reason that we <coughs> wouldn't have people come in uh, mm-hmm. and be part of the call is that – so, sorry, I meant as in create a separate call. So you have your usual Coco thing, but also yeah. have like a Coco esque thing with with sort of kind of. Hey, I mean, honestly, that's not that's not a bad yeah. idea. It's not a bad idea. Uh, it takes time and all that. So, so yeah, there's that. I guess. But uh, but with that, I mean, there's there's just every single choice made has ramifications every which way. So if we did that, how do we choose who gets to be in? Yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden there starts being this thing where it's like, oh yeah, we got these eight people or whatever. But then there's thousands of people like, why, why is it them? Why is it not me? Why is it mm, not this person? Mm. So then all of a sudden you're turning this into a, a like fight, right? Could I always get a hold of Jeff and be like, hey Jeff, how do you do this? How do you do it? Uh <laughs> I don't know but, how but he I does mean, it. He's a machine yeah, too. I don't Jesus. know. I don't know. But it's it's complicated. But the biggest thing for me is the moment you give someone an option between two things. It's going to divide people when they when the thing that they want isn't chosen. So it's hard to talk about behind the curtain stuff too much because people are be like, oh, well, I want it. I wanted that. A perfect example is if we were to like allow in reviews to be chosen by the community and we we're like either we're going to do this movie or we're going to do this movie that splits it so that it's like 50 50. <laughs> Because ideally, we're putting up two options that we actually want to do that people would want to see. And then yeah. if we end up doing Bionicle in review. Oh, God, please I'm no. Sh- yeah, I'm please joking. No. I'm joking. <laughs> but, like, if we end up, but, but it's like, like, I don't want to get people to be like, oh, well, I'm not fucking watching this because they should be doing this other thing. You yeah. know? Mega blocks in like, review. That exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that, that, all, that all happens like more often than you guys would think. Yeah. So oh, dear. every every choice is complicated, and we try our best. That's really all I can. All I can go back to is we try our best. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess everyone appreciates it, and I just want to slide yeah. something in before I go to the games question. Is um, Vitz um, made a sort of like Dungeons and Dragons sort of kind of funny campaign mixed in with Fast and Furious? So if you're oh yeah, out ideas. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. no. Hey, I um, saw that. I saw that a long time ago when he when he first made it. Yeah. It's it's so awesome, and like when we brought that up on the. Uh, uh the podcast a long time ago i was just like if we ever were to do dnd it would have to be that and like yeah. his the whole story he came up with was so funny i just don't like none of us have the passion for dnd and like i so, think that yeah. i think yeah. that if we if we committed i think it would be really good but mm. it's again it's that, it's that fire like you, you there needs to be a passion to like get things to go or else we're just doing something and like especially yeah it's it's funny because like I see a lot of people like there's like a meme of just like like oh man it's like we didn't have anything else to do so we made a podcast and like I look at that and I'm like that's not <laughs> but like that that's I don't feel that way like 
we're not just another podcast. This is what we do. We make podcasts. Like right. if kind of funny does one thing. It's make podcasts, right? We do so many right. other things, but we're podcasters. And it's like, there's so <laughs> many, like, I think that within that, a big joke is like, oh, we, we started a D&D podcast. And it's like, it kind of feels inauthentic to me for us yeah. to do that just because everyone else is doing it. I'm not against yeah. it because I do think that it would end up being great. And like, we just need somebody to really care and to pioneer into the project. Every Let's single thing, we do, <laughs> <laughs> every single thing we do are kind of funny is led by somebody being like, I want this to happen. This is a passion project of mine. And I'm the leader of blessing this thing with PSI. I love you. And to- I mean, totally like with that yeah. type of thing, it's like, you know, blessing coming in, like, he was that voice, right? Uh, with first impressions now, he is also that guy. He's like, I want it. We need to be doing more preview content. And I'm like, cool, great. You know? Um, yeah, it's like, it's every show needs a leader. It, it needs somebody to at least kind of be like in control of it. That doesn't mean they're the ones, only ones making decisions. That doesn't mean they're the ones that are <laughs> responsible for it all. It's just, they're the ones that are kind of making sure that it's running. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess if there isn't that passion, then, um, you know, it's, we're not going to receive it as well either. So totally. Good answer. And then it, then it all falls um, apart. I just want to say as well, uh, in terms of the game's content, I remember when Kind of Funny first started, uh, you were on the gaming shows. Not a lot of people were very receptive <laughs> to you. Oh, no. Um, <clears throat> and actually, I was I was thinking about this when you were on PS I Love You, uh, XOXO, uh, part two, act two. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly, <laughs> it's it's such a pleasure to listen to you these days. And, and honestly, just keep up the great work. Thank and you, man. Just quickly, my, my last, last question is, Nintendo in 2021, what do they need to do to make it a banger year for you? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know, man. This is Nintendo. Hey, real quick, I do want to say I really appreciate you saying that about PS I Love You because it's it's been a journey, man, and it, it's been real hard. And anytime I see, you know, people kind of like talking shit about Imran or Blessing or whatever, it's just like it breaks my heart. And mm-hmm. I, I keep trying to tell them, like, hey, guys, just push, just push, just push. Like, it, we're gonna come out another side at some point, and everything's gonna change. And like, I can't believe, somewhere. I can't believe. I, I talk to Greg so often uh, about how insane it is to me that there is such a amount of people on Reddit or the Facebook group or whatever. Like, man, I I miss it when it was just Tim and Greg on Games Daily. Like, I miss like why why don't we get more Tim and Greg? I'm like, y'all motherfuckers are <laughs> wanting Tim and Greg like as if that's a thing. Like, I, it's just it's so funny to me. Like. But anyway, I, I really appreciate it. That that means a lot. I know how OG you are, and like it's it's been a it's been a big big journey that we've all been on. So many things have happened, but I am extremely proud of how it all is shaking out. And doing that PS I love you was a a a moment for me. It was a big a big moment. So I'm happy that people don't let it be the last one. Did. Honestly, oh yeah, I hope not. I hope not. Um, uh, to answer your question about Nintendo 2021, I. Nintendo's so weird right now. Like this year was such a, a weird one for everyone, but for Nintendo specifically and for Nintendo fans, you know, N- Nintendo fans um, <laughs> have been really kind of spoiled the last couple of years. And every franchise got so much love. I have to and have I my cat it, out, so I'll be right back. You guys keep go going. Go for it, man. Go for it. <laughs> uh, but this year was kind of uh, a, a bummer for the type of Nintendo gamer I am, which is mm-hmm. somebody that doesn't really care about Animal Crossing. <laughs> So it's like, you know, there's, there's, there's really kind of nothing for me. Uh, but you know, Paper Mario. You don't like, hyped about the Musou game coming out. In, in I am. Time? I am actually. Uh, that that's. I actually played is... Breath of the Wild just for the Musou game. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that's my thing is like the with Hyrule Warriors. I'm legitimately excited about it. I wish it was out now and not the day that yeah. Cyberpunk comes out. Like, god damn! After Miles Morales and next ne- gen, like, next <laughs> like it gets complicated. But I am looking forward to it. But I, I, I don't know. It's so weird. Hmm. Let me go back to the basics here. What do I want to see from Nintendo in 2021? I want to see Nintendo go back to being normal about making announcements. I want to see a normal schedule at directs. I want to see, you know, hopefully... Well, you don't enjoy this... waking up at 6 a.m.? <laughs> I, I, hate... I would be down to wake up at 6 a.m. if I knew I had to. Like... Yeah. I hate that. Oh, Paper Mario! The trailer's just live. It's like, yeah. all right, you could like the the Mario Direct. It's like there was so much they could have done differently. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I just I miss a type a consistency. I miss 
knowing that we're going to get a direct at some point, not knowing exactly when it's going to come, but knowing that within a couple months it's going to happen and it's going to announce the games for the next three to six months. We just haven't had that. So it's like, it's kind of hard to look forward to Nintendo because there's nothing to look forward to, right? Yeah. Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime 4, obviously. I'm fucking stoked for those. But like, they don't exist right now. Is that next year? <laughs> Is the Switch Pro whatever going to come out next year considering where we are at the moment? I think um, so. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I, I yeah. think the breath. I I think that Nintendo really got hit hard, hardest. I would say from what I've seen of game developers and publishers, uh, because they're so traditionally Japanese. And I think that there was. I've talked to a lot of people um, on different sides of the industry that have alluded to the fact that um, when you look at Xbox or PlayStation, so many of their headquarters are now in america and a lot of the decisions are made there whereas yeah. nintendo of america is still very much the like baby brother to nintendo of japan and the a lot of decisions were made with a more japanese mindset and working from home was not yeah. as accepted they were there. Shut, yeah they were shut down for quite a bit so there's a a lot of interesting stuff. I, I don't know, but I, I do think that we're getting to a point that everybody's kind of... The fact that the next-gen consoles are actually coming out, the fact that since the initial delays of Last of Us and Final Fantasy... like Remember the beginning of this year when everything was just getting delayed and it was just like, yeah. ah! That's all over. Like Games aren't getting delayed like that anymore, right? Cyberpunk got delayed. Like We're going to get Cyberpunk in a couple weeks. We're going to get Can't Miles wait. Morales. We're going to get series x and ps5 so i think that we're going to start getting things and the, the timelines have all shifted but i think that nintendo is going to deliver breath of the wild 2 and a uh, switch pro next year hopefully they need to stand out i think next year with uh next gen uh being mm -hmm. among us but mm -hmm. no tim thank you so much for your time i'm gonna thank you man give it back to gage but honestly thank you to you and all the other guys for the content you made this year it's, it's helped a lot of us to get through this hell yeah man thank all right have a good day dude thank Thanks, you man Bye. Awesome. So that does it for all the guests today. Um, awesome. So I do have one more thing I want to, one more segment, but before we get to that, is there anything you want to plug? Anything you want to ask me about myself or Simply Sassy? Anything like that? Uh, the one thing I want to plug is Simply Sassy. You guys, you're obviously listening right now, so I don't need to tell you to go subscribe, but they're obviously doing new podcasts. They're trying new things. Support that. Leave some feedback. Go in the comments. Let them know what you like. If you don't like something, be nice about it. You know, like kind of bring up a positive way to how to how to like get it to be better. Because that's what we all want is for this to be better, for everyone to enjoy this stuff more. We got a great group of people over here. You're choosing good ones to listen to. So that's the that's the only plug I got. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um yeah, go check out the not KFAF uh Photoshop challenges. We're keeping that alive until KFAF comes back. Man, <laughs> there are ridiculous people in this community uh oh yeah last week was um i think it was last week it was rejected well, not rejected but like photoshop challenges that didn't make it on kfaf so people were bringing uh -huh. in like all these old things from the past like two oh, years and that's, we that's a great went topic. through uh, people are making original stuff the one for which we might actually record tomorrow it's um uh what's that animated movie inside out i think the one pixar movie or whatever where it's like the characters are like the emotions in the girl's head or whatever. Oh yeah, it's and there's there's that, it's that out. yeah. There's that meme of like I wonder what's going on inside her head and it zooms into. So yeah. the idea for this week's was what's going on inside Gary Wood's head because at the beginning of every single Games Daily episode, he looks like he's rethinking every single life decision he's ever oh, made. That's scary, to to man. Point. That's scary. So we're going to have some pretty I've seen a couple of them and they're brilliant. There's so many talented people in this community. Absolutely. Um one of the things you brought up while talking to Kamel was uh, pushback from the community, stuff like that. People kind of being not so nice to people. Mm -hmm. And then you just plugged us and told people, people to be nice. I needed to be accountable for something. I totally, <laughs> like, I was very blunt to Imran on Twitter at one point and got my ass blocked. So Imran, if you're watching this, I apologize. I wasn't trying <laughs> to be an asshole. Hey, it's it's but, difficult, man. You know, the, the things, whole blocking conversation on the internet and on Twitter, it, it gets <laughs> toxic so very quickly. Sure, but like sure. just something uh, – what happens often is someone like you means well, right. oversteps the bounds, gets blocked, and is just like, oh, fuck, <clears throat> please unblock me. 
it's so complicated. The amount yeah. of conversation, the amount of DMs I've gotten to people like, hey, man, can you get Greg to unblock me? And it's like, I'm sure you're a good dude. I'm sure this is good stuff. But it's like, you just need to, right. as long as you understand, this shit's hard for us, man. Exactly. Like, it's so hard to just see negativity. And it's so easy to be like, fuck this. I'm not dealing with it. And they shouldn't have to deal with it. Exactly. So, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, but I, I appreciate I'm not, you. I'm not asking for him to unblock me or anything. I'm just, if he does see this, I'm sorry. You're a good dude. I was talking shit on so Twitter. Far. Yeah. So that's yeah. just me trying to spread some more positivity for something that I may not have been too positive about. And hey, man, look, like mistakes are made. And sometimes it takes you making the mistake and getting blocked and seeing that to be like, oh, shit. I didn't realize what I was saying was was bad, but like right. it was. And so it's good. We we all we all need room to grow. <laughs> Absolutely. We all need to be able to make mistakes and continue forward. So. Absolutely. Keep on pushing forward. So the last segments for the show that I want to close it out with. Uh, yesterday, I reached out to Twitter, put it out there, let everybody know, hey, I'm going to have Tim on the show. And I asked them to DM me and tell me what kind of funny means to them. Huh. And so I've gotten a few DMs from people from the kind of funny community that I'm going to read off to you. So the first one we have from uh, our friend Billy at Billy the Door on Twitter. <clears throat> Billy says... I've met so many great friends through the Kind of Funny community, and since this mess started, I've seen so many people get together and start building their own communities, which all have the heart and soul of being great friends to one another and supporting each other, supporting each other's creative endeavors. Greg, Tim, Nick, and Andy, and the rest should be incredibly proud of themselves for building something so special that has a positive impact on so many lives. Thank That's you, man. From our friend. Thank you, man. Billy. It, it, it warms my heart. It's, it's all we're trying to do. See, we have one, two, three, f- four more that I'm gonna go through. So, I love it. Enjoy. Uh, our friend Dusty Mac. Um, let's see. I just wanted to say, kind of funny gives me a sense of community that means a lot to me these days. Uh, conversing with the with like-minded people daily is quite heartwarming and meaningful, which is totally true, especially in times like this where you kind of need something, something <laughs> because everybody's I mean, we're all closed off. There's not really that much interaction with people anymore uh our friend alec bobco writes in to me kind of funny means community i've never been a part of a community of fans quite like this before i've become friends with so many people that if i'm having a bad day and need to vent about it either on twitter or the facebook group i know people will be there for me no matter what it honestly just feels like yesterday when i started watching kind of funny content back in november of 2017 but I finally made made the decision to be more active in the community around January or February of 2018. I love this community and can't wait to see it grow even more. Love you all, kind of funny best friends. I love it too, man. Like having the like checking the Reddit is something I do multiple times a day. And sometimes it brings me there's fear <laughs> going in. But most of the time, it's you know, it's, it's a nice getaway. It's a nice just like way to like see what's up with with friends and what they're talking about and the <clears throat> facebook group has always been something for me that since day one i've been a part of and i look at that again multiple times a day and to see the multiple communities that have formed within it and whether someone's having a good day or a bad day i i, I love someone's having a bad day they go on the facebook group there's instantly a hundred comment thread of people trying to make them feel better somebody gets married gets engaged <laughs> has a kid gets a job like whatever positive thing they put it up and they are just like fully supported and pushed for their moment. And I just, I love that. Like that is such a beautiful freaking thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. This one comes from Jesse G on Twitter. Well, actually at pink spider Felix is her username. She is the art. She makes for the Photoshop challenges are incredible. If you, if you haven't seen them yet, yeah, go, uh, go to her uh, Twitter page at pink spider Felix. and check them out at pink spider Felix. She does a lot of incredible art. The f- pin tweet she has is a hand-drawn thing of shirtless Miles Morales oh, swinging. Oh, yes, of course, of course. I love it. She, this is insane, man. Yeah, her first post Ooh. after that's the one for the kind of funny Photoshop challenge. Can't wait. A not KFA Photoshop challenge. I always get that confused. <laughs> oh, wow, this thing of her, of <laughs> Witta is so great. Yeah. <laughs> so she, <laughs> she writes in, Uh, In regards to what kind of funny means to me, I don't know, I guess for a really long time it was a way for me to keep up to date on all things video games, especially when I couldn't afford to own anything. It at least made me feel like I was connected to something that I had grown up loving. 
But it's not only that, it's the hilarious shenanigans that go on, and just being a fucking bright spark in a time bright spark in a time when I think everyone needs a little bit more light in their lives. I know that it keeps me sane on my long commutes back and forth to work every day, and for that I can't thank them enough. Although I do have to say, listening listening to them now with masks on makes it much easier to hide my grin and giggles than it was before. <laughs> That's awesome. See, Very there's true. some pros in this situation. God, <laughs> right? I'm just stuck looking at the, the Pink Spider Felix art now. It's so good. Yeah, she's incredible. Um, Let's see. We have one more from... I don't want to mispronounce his name. It's either uh, Johnny Downs or Joni Downs. It's J-O-N-Y. Okay. So I'm going to go with Johnny just because yeah. that's... Uh, let's see. I grew up with aspirations and goals that my friends would be doubtful of. Doubt created fear, and fear ultimately controlled my life. Kind of Funny has given me a comfort that means I can finally believe in myself. I don't have to be the next Alfred Hitchcock or whatever, but I'm perfectly happy with being myself, which is surprisingly hard for a lot of us. As we've seen recently, being fans of people from the internet can run some massive emotional and physical risks. I trust Kind of Funny as a business, and people, and as a community. A spark of passion from then has meant a, life to- a lifelong change for me. Hell yeah, man. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. I 100%. Love it. That's all you can really do is just, you know, be nice to people. Yep. That's it, man. It's that easy. <laughs> Definitely. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Tim. This thank has you, been man. incredible. Uh, you guys, not to get too sappy, but Kind of Funny is responsible for fundamentally changing my life in multiple Hell ways yeah. over the past, oh God, five years. I started watching you guys back in like March of 2015, I think. So shortly after you broke off oh, and wow. started your own thing. Um, yeah, you guys have helped me through some of the most difficult times from uh, toxic work environments to uh, you know loved ones passing away, stuff like that. There's always been that one kind of gleaming factor where I can jump on and, hey, there's a new Game Over Greggy show or whatever that I can watch and it helps raise my spirits. So I, I just want to say yeah, thank you to, to everyone there, kind of funny. Um, yeah, you guys do a lot for everyone. The fact that you're still doing it now in, you know, work from home, you're still pouring as much passion into everything truly means a lot to every single one of us. So thank you. Awesome, man. Well, thank you guys for supporting in, in any way that you guys do, whether it's just listening, whether it's being part of any of the different community groups, Facebook, Reddit, anywhere, being on Twitter, all that stuff, or whether it's like starting your own thing and, and doing something kind of inspired by us or I love that. I think it's all so fantastic and Best of luck to all of you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching today, guys. Uh, First ever episode of Out of Our League. Uh, Hopefully (laughs) I can get this uploaded pretty soon, maybe even today. Um, But thank you so much. If you liked it, leave a like, hit the subscribe button. Do whatever you want. Leave a comment. Get the conversation started. And we'll uh, see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.